Hello to all. Welcome to Divas That Care Network. I am Joyce Benning, and I will be your host for this absolutely invigorating, robust lifestyle show. I would like to thank each one of our listeners that have tuned in live today and the ones that will be listening to the recording on the podcast. I am just so very grateful for each and every one of you. And you are all in for an amazing, amazing show today, as I have with me a brand new diva. Her name is Lydia, and probably more of you know her as Lady Apana. And I am just overly excited today to have her with me. And her and I are going to chat about the divinity of horses. Oh my, is it going to be a very special show. Lydia, could you please introduce yourself to our listeners today? Well, absolutely. It's just a true honor and pleasure to be on your show today, Joyce. Um, I'm a Renaissance woman and high-performance wellness coach, founder of OpponaHealing.com, and I bring together 30 years of my passion, expertise, and wisdom in holistic healing in pathways for every stage of personal development to help you heal, grow, and evolve and live a centered, connected, and conscious life. At my Opona Healing Ranch, I offer equine-assisted therapy and equine healing retreats to help you return to wholeness through heart-centered, transformational relationships with horses. I find that equine healing retreats are a very powerful way to help you reclaim your health and regain your energy and connect with your inner power. And what we do at Opponent Healing Ranch is we um, design the retreat specifically for the needs of each person or group. So we offer private group and corporate retreats. And I began my journey uh, with horses uh, through dreams. Horses started coming to me in dreams. And at the age of 10, um, I consciously started my path of personal development when I was uh, starting to heal my chronic illnesses that I had from birth. And it was through the connection with horses, animals, and nature that I was able to go deep within myself um, on this incredible healing journey to heal my chronic health conditions um, and connect with the divinity of horses. Oh, oh, wow. What what a story. Oh, girl. So since 10 years old, you have had this connection to the horses coming to you in your dreams. Oh, that is, that is just beautiful. Oh, I love that. Wow. Well, that goes right into our topic today on the divinity of horses. They have always been, when I think of divinity, I think of a sacred soul, a sacred spirit, of something in that form. And as you talk about them coming to you in dreams in a sister of horses, beautiful. So how how did this all come about that you started to realize at the age of 10 that you were going in deeper and having this connection through these beautiful dreams that you were having. Could you share with our listeners a little bit of that experience as we talk about the divinity of horses? Well, absolutely. Um, At the age of 10, many spirits came to me in dreams and um, guided me to different books and different pathways for my own healing because my chronic illnesses were difficult to diagnose. And for anybody that has a difficult to diagnose health condition, it can be a very lonely um, and frustrating um, experience. Uh, But I always knew where there was a will, there was a way. Um, and it was through the messages from the divine um, that I was guided to my pathways. But it wasn't until my late 20s when I was in what I call my cocoon of healing uh, when I decided to finally, um, to finally resolve right these ongoing chronic health conditions uh, that I had a dream telling me I was a sister of horses. But, you know, at the time... I I was so immersed in just surviving, right, like physically surviving and emotionally and financially surviving that I just wrote it down and went off and did my laundry, you know, and and made (laughs) dinner. And I didn't – I wasn't a person that yearned to be with horses. I I loved animals and horses. But the horses recognized me 
before who I was before I recognized who I was myself. They activated uh, my heart and connection to my soul to help me remember who I was and to help guide me uh, very gently but very persistently. Um, there was a time in my late 20s in that cocoon of healing where they came to me every night in dreams. And then I met um, shortly about 10 years later I had dreams about um, a horse that I was going to meet and um, ended up meeting that horse, I guess, by chance, but it wasn't really by chance, through divine guidance at a, um, a, horse, a horse trail, like a, riding, a trail riding a place. And I talk about my experience meeting that horse trigger in my soon-to-be-released chapter, The Divinity of Horses, in the book Evolving on Purpose co-creating with the divine and how that horse trigger his name was trigger but he triggered me right um (laughs) to um actually change my whole life and um help humans heal through my holistic healing work i started my holistic healing practice through the guidance of my spirit guides and the horse the, the divine horses that came to me in dreams um and then i started my uh, horse rescue sanctuary so their their presence um is more real their spiritual presence is more real you know than in the material world and they're such highly evolved divine beings that i really believe we should consciously honor and take action to support them in every way. Oh, oh, I truly agree with that. They are they are true divine souls. And how you are when you were talking about how Trigger changed your life. When you said his name was Trigger, I thought, "Oh my, what a fitting name. He triggered you into changing your whole life." And going into your healing practice and into the horse sanctuary and honoring these horses for what they are because they are a divine, divine spirit and soul. And I always say when you open your heart to them, it is amazing what what will happen. And it sounds to me from your experience with Trigger, you opened your heart to him and how your world changed from there. Oh, that is that is just beautiful, Lydia. I love that. Well, it's so humbling. I mean, it's so powerful and so humbling. And and we connect with energies and a capacity mm-hmm. that we didn't even know either existed or knew that we were capable of. When we're supported, uh, we are always supported by the divine, but when we're conscious of that support, we release fear and anxiety and overwhelm and have the courage to step into a greater version of ourselves. And as I mentioned, sometimes we don't even know um, the path and the joy that's awaiting us. But when we can connect with the divine, we have that trust and faith and feeling of inner security that I can take one more step forward and I can connect with my highest and best self and then support others you know, in doing that in whatever way, you know, each person feels called to do so. Um, But the presence of horses in our lives and on the planet, horses are, um, they're, they're so highly evolved angelic beings that they meet you where you're at. So they don't expect more of you than what you're ready for. And so some people call that dumbing down, but it's more, a ma- it's more a matter of them being able to tune into you and honor you and then support you where you're at and then help you grow and heal and evolve. And that's been my experience with horses. I, ha- I continue to have dreams of horses, and every horse that comes to the Horse Rescue Sanctuary, I'm told about by my ascended horses in dreams. Sometimes I'm not um, logically ready. <laughs> like I haven't built that new pasture yet, you know. I haven't, and and but they keep you moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know, they keep you growing, but at your at a pace that honors you. And it's really a phenomenal gift to uh, have uh, a relationship with the divinity of horses. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I. I agree with you because, oh my, how you were 
talking about how they meet you where you are at. And I see that so much in my own horses. And the other thing that comes to my mind when you said that, they do not judge you. They yes. love you for who you are. They pass no judgment on to you. And they just, they're there to help you in every way. They're they're so heart centered. Their hearts are so big. They're just they're just giving all the time. It's just amazing. But oh, I love that because that is that is the total experience I have had with my three. Each one has met me in a different way, and it is just it's incredibly beautiful. And how I'll say something to one horse, and they'll all they all know it. I mean, they're just they're so connected to each other. Too. Just like you said, your horses have that you have gotten at the sanctuary have come to you from the ones that have crossed over, have ascended, and come through your dreams, and that is just beautiful too. Because, like I said, they are they. It, it just amazes me. I'll, like I, you talk to one, and they all know what's going on. I'm like, oh my goodness, you guys are just so connected. I've always thought what a beautiful world this would be if we could meet people where they're at and not pass the judgment on to them like our horses do with us. It is it is incredibly beautiful. I love that. Well, this is that's exactly it. And as we all know, the Heart Math Institute it did that classic study where they measured the electromagnetic field of a horse's heart, and it's five times larger than that of a human. Mm-hmm. So just standing beside horses, we don't have to always do something with them, just being you know, we're human beings and learning to be in our own presence, to be still with the horses um, is, an, is an incredible gift that can be quite challenging, you know, for humans who often they'll come here, whether it's a volunteer or on a treat and say, well, what are we going to do? And that's great to have equine therapy as that, you know, where you do activities with horses. But here we enter into the stillness and with the horses and into the oneness with the horses and it's a different type of gift, but it activates your core energy, you know, your connection with your spirit. And so just standing beside horses. And exactly as you said, um, when I'm doing Reiki with one horse, the other horses often come around and they will release some of the tension or if there's any kind of buildup of energy, often as the horse I'm treating does. So they'll breathe out and, you know, they'll make little comments or like little neighs or something. And it's a whole mm-hmm. like symphony, a, a presence. Um, and I've had phenomenal, like just phenomenal experiences, spiritual experiences with horses. I was healing one of my, helping one of my horses heal who had a leg injury and we would lay down together under the stars at night and I would channel Reiki to her and then she would go into a trance and where our bodies just dissolved into into oneness. And then the other horses would come around. They first check out, make sure you're okay because you're lying down. <laughs> and then they participate. They'll put their head, like their nose on my top of my crown chakra when I'm channeling energy to the other horse laying down. Um, and then my horse laying down, if I fell asleep during the Reiki, she would look at me, I'd wake up with her face, like, are you ready to get up yet? Are you, I'm waiting for you to get up so I can get up, right? <laughs> so the level of intelligence um, and spiritual mastery um, we're just discovering. And as you said, horses have always been humanity's greatest ally, guide, friend. They fought in wars. They created, helped us create agriculture. We still measure things in horsepower. We would not have the comforts and conveniences of our modern world today without the support, the unconditional love, and the huge sacrifices that horses have made for humans. Oh, oh, that is so true. And the unconditional love, they just give it all the time. That is what is so beautiful, too. And when you were talking about being in the presence, which you do at your... Uh, with horses on horse therapy and things. And as humans, a lot of times we want to, we think we need to come with an agenda. 
And it's like, right. okay, I had one of my horses tell me one day, come with no agenda. And I'm like, wow. oh, wow, isn't that beautiful? Just no agenda and no cell phone is what it, they all said. <laughs> Don't come with your cell phones. Leave them away. <laughs> So true. <laughs> <laughs> and I I just love that. And the one has totally taught me to live in the present moment. And that's what you said, to be present, to be there with them and just stand with them. Just stand in the stillness yeah. and the oneness. And that's that's what's so beautiful. And that's they love that. I mean they're oh, yeah. they're there as a divine spiritual soul to be there to help us humans to heal in so many different ways. And their love just keeps coming. And at, like you said, when you were laying with the horse and if you fell asleep and would wake up, they didn't try to get up till you were awake and were like, okay, is it time? can we get up now? <laughs> I'd wake up with these big eyes, like any time now, you're, any time you're ready, I'd like to get up. <laughs> oh, that is just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so many I have so many stories where you know you just go out to do the basic farm work and feed them and you have this powerful spiritual experience without planning it you know as you said with no agenda um, and and to be able to even take you know five minutes right to assimilate that and what we want to do is we want to bring those experiences that we have with the horses and integrate it into our state of being because it's just they're just re- helping us remember who we are. You know, as I mentioned, as a human being, we're already highly evolved spiritual beings who are here on the planet uh, to support each other, to be what I call humane conscious stewards of life. And so they help us remember who we are um, to ignite, not only activate our heart, but to ignite our inner power of oneness. It's not power over, you know, it's power within and power of connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so, so that is the gift, you know, that horses, every horse, you know, on this planet, I call a pillar of light. So everywhere there's a horse, standing somewhere, whether it's a wild horse, a domestic horse, a horse in another country, this is a channeler, this is a great pillar of light raising the vibration for all of us. Um, And the least we can do is honor them. Yes. Oh, how true. To honor them as, and I love what you said about them being a pillar of light. And that is, that is so true. They are truly a pillar of light. And to honor them for what they bring to this world and like bringing us, you had said earlier, a greater version into ourselves. And these horses do that in so many ways. And I totally agree with you. It is it is past time and we need to honor these horses for everything that they have done over all the lifetimes and everything they have brought to this world and how how they keep coming. They just keep giving that unconditional love. And that is, it is just so beautiful. But I love that about horses being a pillar of light because that is, that is so true. They are just totally a pillar of light in my life, in my heart, in my soul, in everything. And they, that light shines so bright. They are such a spiritual being. It is just, it's incredible when you, Open your heart to them. They will just give and give and give. Well, they do. And, you know, we look at horses who incarnate into very difficult circumstances on earth, and I've thought Mm -hmm. a lot about that. And Mm -hmm. what I can conclude, and I just in my own, you know, capacity of consciousness at this moment, (laughs) is that they have the courage um, and the strength to hold light in that space where they're at, in that darkness, right, in that difficult situation. And that is never for naught, right? That is always helping the people around that horse or those horses to shift, you know. And I always say, you know, horses, as you said, you know, they don't complain. 
And um, I remember Yvette once said to me, she has a lot of her own horses. She said, well, they never complain, you know, like, you know, it's hard to, they hide their pain, right, so well, right? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. That sometimes it's hard. They don't always tell you what they need in terms, you know, like a dog barking or something, right? Or my cat, right. my cat will meow incessantly, right, when she wants to. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but they're, they're constantly in a deep state of presence um, it, to help awaken the souls of the humans that they've come to the earth to support. And I, it's the most courageous of souls to come into the darkest of places to bring light into those places and and horses are these angelic beings who have come um both in beautiful experiences of light and love and in the darker places that we're all working to transform into higher vibration and into light and i would like to say if humans loved horses the way horses love humans there would be peace and abundance on earth yes yes Oh, that was beautiful. Yes, I agree totally with you because their love is just so unconditional and it just keeps on going and going and going. Even what they have dealt with from, I mean, horses have different humans that they deal with throughout their life. I have one that came from rough handlers is how I will state it. and uh, But he came with love to me. And he yeah. has done nothing but give that love. He's he's not going back and holding anybody responsible for what his past was. And I, he reminds me of the courage and strength. And he held light through all of that. And then when yeah. he came into my life, how he held held the light and held his love right out there for me. So, yes, oh, that was just beautiful. And then being angelic beings, that is so true. They are totally angelic beings. Oh, I love that. If we could only love them as much as they love us, what a beautiful, beautiful world this would be. How true this is. And, oh. and so much suffering of humans and, and horses and animals and, and so much unnecessary hardship um, could dissolve. Right. You know, we mm-hmm. have we have struggles to create resistance to help us grow but there there are some struggles um and some experiences that are, take so long to recover from that I think we've evolved as as a human as humanity I think we are well we are evolving quite rapidly right as we go um forward um and the high vibration of the planet but we have evolved to the point where we may not need to have such extreme suffering anymore and maybe it's time for us to let go of that and embrace the possibility of actually living in inner ease and peace. It doesn't mean everything will be easy, but if we can live more in an inner ease and peace without the severity of of the hardships of, of, of the past 13,000 <laughs> years, according to the cycles, energetic cycles of the planet. And we are shifting from 13,500 years of lower vibration into the next 13,000 years of light, which will um, really, really come to the planet in 2100 when the North Star aligns with the North Poles. So, you know, the ancients always said it was living at this time on Earth, you, you know, is a very it's an honor but it's also the greatest challenge of the universe because we're 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 shifting from an old paradigm to a new paradigm and integrating you know healing releasing creating a new all in this lifetime which is pretty amazing and the horses are here to help us do that um and are fully aware of of what's going on and as you mentioned Horses have horses will have fear and trauma uh, based on their experiences, but when they're given a chance to release and decompress and be in a safe, mm-hmm. loving space, their their capacity to love just continues. I mean, I, that's mm-hmm. I just had I was just speaking with one of my horses um, that has some past trauma. He came over his his his, his new girlfriend, who's a wild mustang. He's a city boy. 
and he was um, a prize hunter jumper, and um, and he fell in love with her wild Mustang, so the city boy and the country oh. girl, and it's very <laughs> rare he leaves her, and he came over, oh. and I just knew he wanted me to talk about um, and have a session with him about helping him release his trauma. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. sometimes they'll start to shake, you know, as they release yeah. their own trauma. It's it's very powerful, um, and it's the only time in my holistic healing work where I actually feel the energy. It's not something oh. I do with with human clients. I don't absorb mm-hmm. the energy when I do mm-hmm. Reiki um, with my human clients. But for some reason with the horses, I feel it's okay. Um, And they do. I mean, horses who have gone through a lot do have deep trauma. But they're looking for every opportunity to heal and release and then love you. They never never reject an opportunity to improve themselves, their life, right, their quality of life. Right, right. Oh, yes. Oh, how very true that is. Oh, my goodness. Well, Lydia, as I knew this would... This has gone, this show has gone so very quickly. It, I cannot believe we have been chatting. It feels like we just barely started chatting and we yeah. have almost <laughs> come to the end of our show. And I'm like, oh, my. And would you please share with our listeners the best way to connect with you when they listen to this show and go, I want to connect with Lydia, Lady Epona? The best way is to sign up for my newsletter, on aponahealing.com that's a p o n a healing.com and we send out a newsletter i try once a week but sometimes it's once a month but mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and i um do the best i can with that and um and in the newsletter i have announcements and um you know and updates and uh, you know, things happening at the ranch and in my holistic health practice. And also I share quite a bit on Facebook, my personal page, and the Epona Healing Ranch Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So those are two places that um, on social media. I'm also on Instagram and LinkedIn, but I'm most active on my personal Facebook page. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Oh, fantastic. And Lydia, I must ask, I have loved chatting with you so much and sharing all your knowledge with our listeners. Will you please come back and be on my show again in the very, very near future? (laughs) Oh, Joyce, it would be an honor and pleasure. You do phenomenal work. Um, You're so committed to supporting the healing of, of women and the planet and animals. And you're a very special angel of light um that has a phenomenal mission that's making a huge difference in the world. So I'm very honored uh, Joyce to to be here today with you and to continue um to to help and support uh humanity grow and heal and evolve in future uh discussions. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for those beautiful kind words. You brought tears to my eyes. Thank you so much, Lydia. And we will definitely connect again and have you back on the show. And you and all your horses have a very magical day for the rest of your day today. Well, thank you, and same to you and your horses. (laughs) Oh, thank you so much. And I would like to thank all of our listeners for listening to this amazing, amazing show with our incredible diva, Lydia, Lady Epona. Please share this show with all your family and friends. Check out all the other hosts and their shows on divasthatcare.com. And remember, if humans loved horses like horses loved humans, what a beautiful world this would be full of peace and abundance. And remember, be kind to all. Have a magical day. Give your animals a great big extra hug and share all your love with them until we connect again on Robust Lifestyles. Stay strong and healthy. 